for getting pension, for receiving invested money from the builder, for cure from ovary cyst and uterine issues, for getting promotion as executive VP, for clearing third year MBBS exam, healed of heavy bleeding, and received increment along with a good bonus. Let's all pause, my dear brothers and sisters, and thank our mother for all the blessings, graces, and favors we have received through our intercession, especially for her protection. And as we raise our hearts in thanksgiving, let us also lift up these petitions in our prayers. For a safe, normal delivery and a normal, healthy baby. For a person viewed by his agency client of 15 lakhs. For tenant in Mumbai and another in Goa for occupying house in Delhi. For a successful bone marrow transplant. For a lady in ICU for the last 20 days with various complications to get the possession and key of the flat which is pending since long, for a suitable life partner, for gift of a child, for getting school admission, jobs here and abroad and for visas, for students appearing for various school board exams, various other institutes, government body exams that they may do well. For a person after bypass surgery had a massive stroke and has not regained consciousness. To find a gold chain lost two months ago. To save a marriage which is on verge of divorce. For persons suffering from glaucoma, arthritis, hepatitis B, virus, scoliosis, Parkinson's, leukoma, lungs infection, different types of cancers, eyes, back pain, is speedy recovery. Let us also pause and place all our personal intentions at the feet of our mother. And let us also remember the people who have asked us to pray for them. Lovina prays all together. O Mother of purpose will suffer. Behold me a miserable sinner at thy feet. I have recourse to thee and put my trust in thee. O Mother of mercy, have pity upon me. I hear thee called by all the refuge and the hope of sinners. Be they my refuge and my hope. Suffer me for the love of Jesus Christ. Stretch forth thy hand to me, a poor sinner. Who recommend and dedicate myself to thee as thy potential servant. I bless and thank God for having his mercy given me this confidence in thee, the pledge as I believe of my eternal salvation. Alas, too often in past times have I miserably fallen, because I had not recourse to thee. I know that with thy help I shall conquer. I know that thou wilt help me if I recommend myself to thee, but I fear lest in the occasion of falling I should cease to call upon thee and should lose my soul. This then is the grace I seek from thee, and I beg of thee as far as I know how and can to obtain it for me, namely in the assaults of hell, always to have recourse to thee and to save thee. O very help me, mother of purpose will suffer. Suffer me not to lose my God. Amen. Mother of purpose will suffer. Pray for thy children. A very full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are your among women, and blessed is the fruit of your own Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and the hour of our death. Amen. Mother of purpose will suffer. Pray for thy children. A very full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your own. Jesus, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and in the hour of our death. Amen. Mother of God, we shall suffer. Pray for thy children. A very full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your own. Jesus, Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, 
now and in the hour of our death. Amen. All together, Holy Mary, suffer the miserable, help the faint heart, cheer those that we pray for the people, be the advocate of the clergy, intercede for our divine women. Let all feed thy aid, O implore thy perpetual succor. Thou hast been made for us, O Lady, a refuge, a helper in need and tribulation. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us thy mother Mary, whose mother's image we venerate to be our mother, ever ready to suffer us, grant we beseech thee that we who earnestly implore her maternal aid may deserve to enjoy perpetually the fruit of thy redemption, who lives and reigns. Session on marriage. 
she finished it quickly and the resource person asked her to wipe out two names from the family tree. She arranged her in-laws names first but not out of anger at all, not out of anger. But she thought of starting with it. Then the speaker again asked her to cancel two more names who she thought of would not be part of her life in future. So she wiped out her siblings' names. Again the speaker asked her to cancel two more names and she cancelled her parents' names. Again the speaker asked her to erase two more names and she cancelled her children's names. The whole assembly was surprised to see this woman removing the names from her family tree who was so important part of her life. The only name was left was her husband's. The speaker and the assembly asked her why. And she said, I have been brought up by my parents very well and I thank God for the gift of my parents. I have grown up with my siblings, my family members, relatives and friends and I have enjoyed growing up along with them. Even I have enjoyed giving birth to my children, educating them, taking care of them and today I am very happy that they are standing on their feet. I highly appreciate the support of my in-laws. But one day all these people, she said, will leave me because they will be busy in their own world. Especially my children, they will may go for higher studies, they may start working there and get married, have children and settle there. So the only person who will always remain with me is my husband who is the bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. My dear couples, in marriage, we want to have bank balance, we want to have money, we want to have gold and property, which is not wrong. Enjoy. But my dear brothers and sisters, the moment you stop having your own partner, having your own spouse in your married life, your marriage will come under stress. This is the first point to have. The second point is some things we can hold on to in our married lives. The first thing what we need to do is hold on to God. Hold on to God who is the center of your married life. Who has brought you in that sacrament of marriage. Hold on to your marriage covenant, marriage commitments. Hold on to love and let go of selfish ambitions. Hold on to connections and let go of divisions. Hold on to forgiveness and reconciliation. And let go of your anger and ego which will destroy your Marriage. Let me share with you all a beautiful, beautiful incident or my experience, you know, how these two visions have taught me a beautiful lesson. When I was in my previous parish, there were two visions used to come outside my window, my room. There was a little place to sit, both couldn't fit in. And whole day they used to fight to sit at that place. Whole day they used to fight. But the beauty of the relationship is, my dear brothers and sisters, whole day fighting, but evening the same peasants used to sit at that place where they couldn't even fit in. But the way they used to sit, sleeping in, in each other's arms, scratching their backs with their feet, 
I'm not saying that I'm enjoying their intimacy, but the lesson I learned is whole day you will fight, whole day you will argue. But in our married life, you must learn to exist. You must admit all your faults of the day. You must admit, you must take initiative to forgive and reconcile. What a lovely message they taught me. It may be my own interpretation, but whole day there are the reasons for fighting. It was so obvious. But again, the same reason just to sit together in that place. So my dear brothers and sisters, Pope Francis, it clearly says, only love, forgiveness and reconciliation will save your marriages. That is on the second point to hold on. The third and the last point is to honor, to honor. Let it be the Hebrews chapter 13 verse 4 tells us, marriage should be honored by all. These are the few ways to honor. Tell your spouse, my dear brothers and sisters, my dear couples, tell your spouse what's coming up on your schedule. Let them be the first to know about important things happening in your married life and in your family. If you are running late, communicate. Call up without fear because someone is worried at home. Someone is worried at the workplace. Respond regularly to their WhatsApp messages, emails, or even missed calls. Attend to their needs as a priority. Don't take them for granted by postponing things. Be fully present when they are speaking to you. And yes, put off or switch off your mobile when your partner is talking to you, speaking to you. And be attentive to your spouse. Avoid controlling your spouse. Avoid dominating your partner. Don't overpower. Because God has created man and woman, husband and wife, equally, equally, my dear brothers and sisters. Romans letter, St. Paul in chapter 12 verse 10 tells us, Be devoted, be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Once I was called, by a golden jubilee couple for their function. And when the compare called them on the stage, invited them on the stage, of course that time, uh, many years back, that time they were in the 70s. And my dear brothers and sisters, first husband went on the stage, he climbed on the stage, and you know what he did? You know what he did? He knew his wife was behind him. He knew she was suffering from arthritis. He knew what was a health issue. He turned behind him. He held her hand. And he helped her to climb the stage. But if and sisters, today's situation is husband girega to bhi chalega, bibi girega to bhi chalega. But if and sisters, concern for your partner is so important. And all of us must remind ourselves of promises which you exchange on the day of your marriage. I promise to be true to you in your good times, in bad, in sickness and in hell. That couple, they need each other's sickness. They were so faithful to their promises. That is why they could complete 50 years of separating from their married life. I will love you and honor you all the days of my life. How many of us remember these promises? Remind yourself all the time when you are fighting, arguing, let us all remember the promises which you exchanged on the day of your marriage. So my dear brothers and sisters, we must always spend quality time to put a spark back into our marriage relationships. So the only way to fan the flame of a good relationship 
is to have your partner along to hold on to your marriage commitments and promises and to honor each other as husband and wife as you have promised one another. Let's all take this only one question for our reflection today. What am I doing to fan the flame of love in my married life? I repeat, what am I doing to fan the flame of love in my married life? It's a pause and reflect. The memory all together. Remember most gracious words in men. That they never was a blow. That anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy death, forsook thy intercession, was left unable. Inspired with this confidence, I fly unto thee, O virgin of virgins, my mother. To thee I come before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O mother of the world incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy. Hear and answer me. Amen. Pray before the blessed sacrament, merciful Lord, whose mercies are without number and whose goodness is without end. You abide with your people in wondrous manner and are with us all days, even to the end of time. By your kindly presence, direct our minds. With your guiding love, watch over our hearts. With your powerful help, deliver us from every tribulation, from all danger and sin, that we may on earth always live with you and in you and in your eternal dwelling. Enjoy your presence forever. Amen. Blessing of the sick, our help is in the name of the Lord who made Lord, hear my prayer. And let my cry come unto thee. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Let us pray. Grant me beseech thee, O Lord God, that these thy servants may enjoy perpetual health of mind and body, and by the glorious intercession of blessed Mary ever virgin, be delivered from present sorrow and enjoy eternal gladness through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord Jesus Christ be amongst you to defend you, within you to preserve you, before you to guide you, after you to guard you, above you to bless you, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Through the intercession of our Mother of Perpetual Succor, may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever and ever. Amen. Mary from thy sacred image, with those eyes so sadly sweet, Mother of perpetual succor, see us near. So, so far, I shall never 
mio passion. Grant that we may so reverence the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that the taste of the fruit of your redemption may ever be within us, who lives and reigns forever and Divine praise is all together. Blessed be God, blessed be His holy name, blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man, blessed be the name of Jesus, blessed be His most sacred heart, blessed be His most precious blood, blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar, blessed be the Holy Spirit in the paraclete, blessed be the great Mother of God, Mary most holy. Blessed be your holy divine conception. Blessed be your glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Saint Joseph, the most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Mother dear. Baby. 